Rowan, welcome. Welcome to the High Epic Times. Hello. Glad to be here. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, my co-host is delivering our, or my cat, to uh, get his ears checked because he had uh, black cysts in them that just got removed. So, Oh, no. So it'll just be me and you, which is okay because um, I'm the one that's a fan of your work. You know what I mean? Like okay. Buttons' mind in terms of what they consume in terms of internet stuff is completely different from what I'm interested in, which is why we're good together as a show because we bring different things. But I, I'm the one that like is obsessed with your content and I've been sharing it with people and screaming from the mountaintops like you got to check out this YouTuber Rowan. So anyway that that's oh, uh, that's so cool well thank you yeah I, I really appreciate that yeah no i love your content um i, I i'm curious well I, I guess let's start with this because people who might be unfamiliar with what you do um let's just talk about how you make your rap battle videos like mm -hmm. the actual approach are you using um an app like fake you like some sort of AI app to do, to do it. Like, I guess walk us through how you actually create the Ben Shapiro versus the Jordan Peterson, but it's, but it's you doing it, I think. Right. Am I right? Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I've been a music producer for about 10 years. And so I've produced for various artists. I have stuff of my own out on Spotify. And um, so I make all the rap beats from scratch. I like reuse some stuff that I have from, from previous years and uh, to make the AI voices, I use this program called RBC V2, which is kind of this like Python uh, based program that one of um, Destiny's fans showed me. And so I train the models myself with their audio, and then I basically speak into it. It converts my voice over to whatever model that I train. Um, mm. And it's pretty based. So I just, I make the beat, I write the raps, I rap it, and then I convert my voice over and then I film. And do you have to imitate the cadence of someone like Destiny or Ben Shapiro for it to sound like Ben, uh, one of those people or, you know, or, or, or do you, or can you rap from your voice the way you would rap and then you can change the cadence and the uh, inflections and stuff in the program? Um, you pretty much, if you want to get close to them, you kind of have to do their cadence and, you know, cause it tracks your pitch, it tracks your accent. So that kind of stuff, um, transfers over. It's pretty much just the, it's just the timbre of your voice or the timbre of your voice that right. transfers over, um, or, or that it converts. So everything that you do, if you're high or low or yelling or you sound angry or you sound chill, yeah. that all is going to shape how the, how the rap sounds. For sure. Also, real quick, I yeah. can hear a slight echo of my audio from your end. Am I, I plugged through a speaker or anything? No, no speakers are on on my end. I, I have my oh, okay. my monitors are completely off. I'm just going through headphones. Oh, okay, yeah, it, it's 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 a bit loud, so it should be fine. It doesn't sound echoey on my end. I'm not hearing that at all. But um, let me know if it bothers you, and I can look into it for sure. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um. Yeah, that's that's really okay. That's really interesting. So, um, do, do you think that's how Tom McDonald went about sampling Ben Shapiro? Because there's no way Ben Shapiro actually rapped that, right? I think he did. Is you my think, understanding. So that's really okay. We, my co-host and I, a couple episodes ago, were debating about that. We so we watched one of your videos. This is, I think, when I introduced buttons to your work, and. And I was like, do you know about this Tom McDonald featuring Ben Shapiro single? And then we started listening to that. And, and Buttons was convinced that uh, it was programmed and was not performed by a live human. And I was arguing, no, I actually think that's Ben Shapiro. So please, please enlighten me because, uh, or enlighten us about this situation. Because I'm not sure how many people out there actually know it was him. M maybe I'm just an idiot and I live under a rock or whatever. And it's like obvious that it's him. But I don't know. What? what what do you think? Well, what do you know? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that was Ben Shapiro. I mean, at least they, they got the real Ben Shapiro to do it and be in the music video. So I would assume it was easy to just put him in the studio and have him um, rap it. I don't know what the utility would have been and them having the real Ben Shapiro, but saying, hey, right. let's build a, a model of your voice and then have another person rap it. So, I'm, I mean, I have no reason to believe that it was not the real him, which right. it, it, 
it is weird that dropped on the same day as mine because I didn't plan to, I, I I didn't know that they were going to release that song. Right. So I did it all night editing that rap battle. I, I didn't, I, it was about 24 hours straight that I did all the editing in one go. And then I dropped it that morning at like 11 or noon. And then like an hour later, the Tom McDonald song came out. And my friend was like, did, did you see that the real Ben Shapiro came out with a rap battle too? And I was like, no. Wow. So that was that was pretty surreal. That is really surreal. Okay, so you're saying you didn't go to sleep. You worked for 24 hours straight. I think I I slept, I think, for two hours. So Holy the entire time shit. that I edited the video from start to finish was from 11 a.m. until 11 a.m. the next wow. morning with, like, a few breaks that's from scratch. Cool. So I just, like, powerhouse do that thing. Wow. That's, that's, in, that's very intense. Um, yeah, I think, I think Buttons was convinced that even the human wasn't real ben shapiro like she thought that everything she was seeing and hearing was programmed and fake um but i'm yeah i i just assumed it was real ben shapiro but then she made me question everything but anyway so it's possible i mean they do have the technology like you know right. whenever they put, they put uh carrie fisher at the end of whatever star wars movie that was yeah and a lot of money you know it's possible to do right sure. right 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 um so are you actually flying to miami to collaborate with steven the real steven i think at some point yeah that's not we haven't set that in stone yet but he did pass that invite my way and so yeah. i'm currently trying to kind of write some content because i don't want to squander an opportunity to be in person and make content with destiny of course and you so, have to yeah yeah i'm trying to come up with kind of a few ideas to, to kind of pitch his way and probably fly out there maybe over the summer or something yeah like we'll like hang out and work on some content so I have one idea and please feel free to shoot it down. This might be ter Let's hear it. terrible, right? But anyway, um, what if, what if you did like a rap battle between AI Steven and that version of Steven could represent uh bad boy orgy Steven versus mm -hmm. real life Steven playing the role of good natured Steven. What do you think of that? That would be funny. There's there's some people <laughs> in the comments that have said like AI versus real uh -huh. destiny, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah, I think I definitely would incorporate AI destiny and the real one into the video somehow. I'm not sure if I would make them battle each other, but like maybe at the very least, like I start rapping as AI, you know, that he pushes me out of the way and it's like he actually comes in. That would be cool. So yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm playing with some stuff, but yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. I do yeah. like the idea of like him battling himself. Do you know what I mean? His own, yeah. his own yeah, demons. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. We could do like modern destiny versus Nebraska Steve or something. Oh, like that. that's good. I like That'd that. I like that too. Um, how do you feel about this, this horse porn vouch situation? I, I, I had to ask you about that. Um, <laughs> how, like, how do you, how do you feel like, his presence is going to, and, and his hentai lolly porn addiction or whatever, how that affects the leftist space at large online. So I, I haven't actually seen the, the pictures. I saw like a blurry screenshot. And from what I saw, I didn't, I didn't detect if, if there was actual lolly. And I know that there was horse porn. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think Bosch has already been pretty open about the fact the that horse he's porn, yeah. horse porn. And so, you know, it's drawn art. It's not hurting anybody, but yeah. like, I don't know about the lolly stuff or if that's like, I don't really have enough information. Oh, okay. That. I mean, if, I mean, if there was like legitimately drawn, like, like child, I porn think on that's, hard drive, yeah, that, then that would be super fucked up. But I don't know if it's like, that's the level in the anime world. What it is. It? Yeah. It's, it's in a, I, his justification for it was like, they're just gobliny looking short stacks mm -hmm. as opposed to, just being children, like drawn children. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I guess I the, thing with drawn, the thing with drawn erotica like that is like it's a balance of how, how old is the person canonically and what about them makes you attracted to them. Like there's a bunch of details that I think are relevant. Okay. But uh, I would I would need to dive into it to see like Got it. if it's actually fucked up or not. I don't know. Okay. Know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I wanted to run a concept by you. And yep. I'm curious what you think about it. So I, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but I think I invented a political concept or like, okay. you know what I mean? And this could be super stonery or it's, it's stonery and it's awesome. It could be both things. But 
what do you what do you think of the idea of alt center? Not alt left. You know, I I remember Glenn Greenwald and uh, Jimmy Dore for a li- for a little bit there. They were referred to as alt left, and I don't think that I don't think that's as accurate as alt center. So imagine if like you we're looking we're looking at a political compass left to right as it normally is, but the dot goes down from center, maybe like four quadrants down the libertarian part on the y axis. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I'll just hit you with some concepts and that I think create this new identity online and just tell me if you think this this tracks. So alt center, very cynical. Um a lot of both sidesism, like both sides are bad and their badness is more or less equal. Um wars are bad, but government sponsored healthcare is good. They use a lot of terms like they hate you, like a lot of they, I find, in their rhetoric. A um, lot of like Russia apologism. Uh, Ukraine's actually bad, I guess. NATO's bad. NATO's evil. CNN is somehow worse than Fox News. Right. Um, real working class Americans don't care about woke politics. Trump isn't as bad as you think. We actually... We've been living uh, under a dictatorship because of maybe the way uh, COVID was handled, and and ergo Biden is at somehow worse. Um, AOC is somehow more cucked than like Rand Paul or something. Uh, Big Pharma as like a blanket statement: it's all bad, it's all evil. What, what do you think? I'm onto something. What do you think? You're definitely onto something. Yeah, that's like it's very much the Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson kind of section of the internet. I'm sure there's more people like that. Who who all did you say that you you've observed? So I'm thinking. Okay, yeah, definitely those people. Um, Russell Brand for sure. Like the mm-hmm. the yeah. bo- the both sides ism. Like they're all sorry. They're all evil. They're all bad. They're all out to get you kind of thing. Um, we got T- Tulsi Gabbard. We got Aaron Mate. We got Matt Taibbi. He's a really interesting one, Matt Taibbi, because um, he used to be referred to as like a leftist journalist when he worked for Rolling Stone. But now that he has he has his own Substack, um, I've I've seen him be referred to as conservative, which again is like a misnomer. It's it's different. I think this is its own new thing. Joe Rogan, I would put in that camp. Brett Weinstein, Barry Weiss, maybe R mm-hmm. maybe RFK. You know. Um. Yeah, the, like the deep state infiltrates both the left and right, and therefore none of them have your best interests at heart and are actually in cahoots. Like it's all a mirage, right? You know, Elon Musk. That's another one. Like, is Elon Musk is he right wing? Is he far, is he a right winger? Yeah, I mean, there is definitely this this bent of almost faux populist anti-establishment stuff that's been happening over the past few years that I've definitely observed too. And that is pretty cringe because it's ultimately, um, I don't think it pushes genuine like leftist politics. Yeah. And it feels to me like they, they brand themselves kind of as left-leaning people. These people like Jimmy Dore um, certainly do. But then in rhetoric, they basically just shit on the Democrats more than the right, almost to the point where I think I watched Kim Iverson debate I, I forget who it was, but it was somebody on Trump versus Biden. And she was like, you know, I'm a populist, leftist, whatever. But like, honestly, you know, with Trump and Biden, it's a wash. And Trump is better about like this and this and that. Right. So it, start, it starts to feel very, I don't want to throw around the word grifty too much, but it feels weird. And I, I've been trying to understand what that movement is other than just being so just like pointlessly contrarian for the sake of it. And also with this weird kind of populist brain rot. Um, yeah, and I think Glenn Greenwald yeah. is really guilty of that. I'm sure you watched uh, his debate with Destiny over I did, and, over the yeah. J six stuff, right? Yeah, I saw that, and I that was kind of a surprise to me. I've never really followed Glenn Greenwald. My only exposure to him prior to that debate was um, listening to Sam Harris years ago talk about how Glenn Greenwald has called him um, Islamophobic. Oh, they, they hate each other. Beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they I always beef. kind of assumed that Glenn Greenwald was a leftist because he's going after Sam Harris he w- for like, he was. You know, 
so so he's kind of been on that same path. As yeah. Person. Yeah, like yeah. in the two thousand in the two thousands, Jank Jank Uger used to quote Glenn Greenwald all the time in his political commentary. Oh, wow. Like Glenn Greenwald used to be like the golden the golden boy. You know what I mean? Like of the left. Wow. He was the guy you reference because he's the smarty pants that knows better. <laughs> you know, that was kind of the energy he had. He had a lot of energy around him, especially um, around the Julian Assange stuff and, um, and, uh, what's his face? Uh, the guy who's still in Russia, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Eddie Snowden, mm-hmm. you know, he had a lot good of energy, Eddie. good old Eddie. Um, but you know, I think you and I watched the same debate between him and destiny and the Trump apologetics are just so weird, especially considering yeah. like Glenn, Glenn is a Jewish American. I- I'm Jewish, right? Uh, but I happen to be from Canada, uh, and he's he's left on Palestine. So, like, why is he left on Palestine? But then he's pro Trump somehow. That 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 really fucks with my mind. And the the only conclusion I can come to is that it's because Trump is the enemy of his enemies, and his enemy is MSNBC and like the. Uh, have you ever heard the term the cathedral? Yes, but I forgot what it means. So it's that guy. Um, oh, what's that guy's name? That uh, Curtis Yarvin came up with this, and it, it essentially represents the three institutions that are controlled by like the liberal elite, which are the the press, the education system, and the banking system. I'm pretty sure that's that is the cathedral. And so, because all these systems are controlled by uh, essentially the li- like the liberal class, the upper middle class liberals. Um, then, then all of our paradigms are seen through that lens. Like everything that we experience is seen. That's, and I think because Glenn got washed up in all that, um, probably because of Russiagate. I don't know if you remember Russiagate from a few years ago. I do. I do. Yeah, that, that was like a big thing that MSNBC was pushing and uh, and it ended up being a lie. So I think he, I don't know, it's like he thinks that mainstream, anything mainstream by definition is bad because it's like vertically integrated into, you know, uh, Time Warner and uh, fucking Viacom and and all the powers that be, right? Right. And so because Trump is the enemy of those people, therefore he's a lesser enemy. I think that's the logic. You're right. I think it, it, it starts off as people on the left wanting to criticize the establishment left and doing the like, well, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm more left than them. And there starts to be this, this parsing apart of the principled people versus the mainstream and the Democrats and people get so caught up and so deep into that, that they, that becomes their main enemy. Yeah. It becomes the, like anti democratic party. And then it's the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Like you were yeah, saying, it yeah. becomes this thing where they almost start to be like, well, I, I hate, you know, the mainstream left so much that honestly, even Trump might not be so bad. So they, they, I think that that is an abandonment of right. genuine leftist principles just for the sake of, of allowing your enemies to define you and being a contrarian. And that's why I think it feels so grifty and, and, and slimy. I, I totally agree with you. And that's how I felt Glenn came off in that debate. That, that debate. I mean, <clears throat> how can you argue that that wasn't an insurrection? Even no matter, no matter how many people didn't get killed or weren't hurt, like why are, right. why are we measuring an insurrection by how much damage was done when so so what a bunch of hicks from fucking arkansas or what or whatever uh who are like fat and, and sit on the couch all day they're not a threat those are the people that uh are trying to uh you know pull an insurrection it doesn't matter it it, it can be the laziest fattest piece of shit if, if if insurrection is in their heart then insurrection's in their heart right i mean it, right. it it's like where where is uh, the motive? Where is mens rea? I mean, he, the guy's a lawyer. He knows all about men. That's the other thing is he 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 really believes because he said it in that conversation with Dustin. He really believes that in Trump's heart that the election was stolen. That it's not um, that he's not lying through his teeth, and it wasn't like a concocted. Uh, 
attempt to seize the government. I mean, it was a, it, it was an attempted coup. I mean, there's so much evidence to suggest that. Even taking the insurrection out of that, I mean, right? It, we, yeah, and, and, and everything else that led up to it and all of the plans of, of, of the, the fraudulent... Uh, the fraudulent electors and just the entire exactly. process. It's it's pretty hard to deny unless you have an agenda where you're really trying to just go to bat for Trump at all costs. Um, you know, I obviously, I don't think that everybody that was there on Jan 6 was there to do an insurrection. Right. I'm sure there were plenty of people that just thought it was just going to be a normal rally and they showed up and I have no yes. problem with those people. I, I'm always careful to make that distinction yeah. that there were some percentage of people there now, exactly how many, I don't know, but there were enough people there that absolutely were planning on trying to stop the vote count and um, trying to keep Trump as president. And so those people were insurrectionists. So it was, you know, at least that portion of it was an attempted insurrection. Right. People can play word games all day and be like, well, it was only like 10% of the people there were there for them and blah, blah, blah. But yes. you got to own that. And 100%, if that had happened, if Joe Biden supporters had come out and done that same thing, you know, the right would be all over that. Like, this is like, of course, the most giant evil. You know? So we got to be consistent here. And obviously those people intended to, to do that. And Trump Every single lawyer and person that he spoke to was telling him that the election is not stolen. There's no evidence that the election was stolen. Including Mark go, Meadows. He had to go from person to person to person to finally find enough crackpots like Giuliani. Exactly. Like, you know? And it's like, at that point, I don't think that you can give Trump the, the leniency to say that he genuinely Yeah, like Yeah, like, like Glenn, you know? Glenn kept trying to sell us on this idea of like, Rudy Giuliani is a respected lawyer. He's an accomplished... Dude, are you really not taking into consideration the last five to 10 years? We're just ignoring that part of it, right? And you, you said word games. That's, I, I got really excited because I literally said that. After I watched that debate, uh, I was talking with uh, my brother and sister-in-law about it. And I literally said Glenn was playing word games. That's literally what I said to them. So, um, fuck. I don't know. It just... I guess the irritation that I experience in my brain is like the cognitive dissonance of like, I want to trust Glenn Greenwald as like a trusted journalist who's done really excellent work that is coming from a, a place of like a good faith place. I want to, I want to believe he's good faith, but after that debate, I just, it, I honestly, it crushed that for me. And so I'm experiencing that cognitive dissonance right now, just talking about it. Yeah, yeah, same. I mean, there's a, once you're on the internet for long enough and you've been watching politics for long enough, you just get a sense of when are people full of shit? When are they starting to kind of grift a little bit and go bad faith? And it's it's so hard to articulate. And I want to make a video on it one day explaining yeah. what that phenomenon is. Yes. So you can smell it. You can and smell it, yes. That have that vibe, and they're like, "Well, this and that and that," and you're like, "You're not doing, yeah, no." Can you're I... starting to do this weird thing, and you uh -huh. know, I mean, obviously, case in point, like yeah. like Dave Rubin. Oh um, my God! You know, yes, you just get these vibes from people. Over yes, time. It, it, it <laughs> start off seeming kind of good faith and better. Yes, but there's just this pipeline. Of, yes, I, I I don't know if it's audience capture. I don't know if it's money. I don't know if it's the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but something happens to these people. Audience capture is definitely a part of it. Wrong shit points and their careers tank and they become propagandists. You know? Fucking a thousand. Per I think, I think, um, uh, the audience capture thing is a, is a huge aspect of it. I mean, I can't think of a single human on the internet who asks less pointed questions than Dave Rubin. Like he uses words like stuff and things and all the rest. Those words are using, or terms are using, a, they're doing a lot of heavy lifting, you know? Yeah. Lot of heavy lifting, a lot of broad brush strokes with that guy. That's when I started to sniff it out where I was like, can you, like, is it possible for him to ask a more fucking pointed question? He's he, like, can you just try to not be so vague? You know what I mean? He's in, he can't. Oh, I know he's he, he's absolutely terrible and his content has just grown more and more. Um, I would call him nothing less than a propagandist at, at this point because he's really yeah. stopped doing his 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 interview format. It's um, as much. It's mainly just these short little three minute videos. I've been watching him lately because my next video is going to include Dave Rubin. Spoiler. But um, I love that. I, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your service. 
I'm, and I'm saying that like totally uh, unironically. For sure. It's, yeah. it's, it's definitely my most high effort project and I'm very excited to put it out. Um, but I have had to suffer sadly through watching Dave Rubin in order to like, you know, make the video and yeah, man, it's bad. It's, <laughs> it's like so that bad. Guy is just a walking, like you can, I can see a human that is just a <laughs> conduit for like a money machine. And yeah. There's no soul in him. There is no yeah. human laugh. There is no, no. self-respect. It no. is literally just, you plug in that high and you are an asset of big, you know, giant moneyed interests who pay you to say shit. And that is all he is. That's all he is. It's really sad to see, to see a person become a husk. Because I used to watch Dave Rubin. Me too. I, yes, 10 years ago. Yeah. In the early, early days. Yeah. You know, that, and his trying to be like, oh, I'm still a liberal. And he would actually push back against the right a little bit at that point. Yes. But as time has gone on, it's just become very evident that. You know, yeah, I mean, I've been I've been watching the Young Turks since the their inception. So I've been watching them. I mean, I don't watch them anymore, really, but for 20 years on and off, let's say. So I remember yeah. when Dave Rubin was on the Young Turks, we're talking 13 years ago or whatever. So I've seen that guy's yeah. entire career tra 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 trajectory. Um, oh, wow. Maybe, okay. not, maybe not including like his cringy 90s stand-up comedy era. Like, obviously, we're only post-hawking uh, and laughing at how cringy it is now. But, uh, yeah, That's man. That's deep Rubin lore right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, I, I, I think he's, a, a like you said, a husk of a human, uh, a, an empty shell, an empty vessel <sighs> on this topic of like sniffing out when you start, you're starting to get the stink a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed to say this and I, I'm really, I'm very curious what you think, but <sighs> to breathe before I say this publicly, I'm starting to get that smell from David Pakman there. Mm. I said it. It's really, I don't want to say it. I don't want to feel it, but I'm starting to get a stench. I'm starting to get bad vibes. You know, I, I don't watch enough David Packman to be able to say, um, I watch him. I maybe consume like one or two Dave Packman videos every month or so, just okay. like short little clips. And yeah. he has seemed okay. Yeah. S certainly much more of, you know, a liberal than like a sock dem or a dem sock. Well, anything. but he like, sells himself you know? as a sock dem. That's the problem. He, t mm -hmm. he tells you he's right. a sock dem, but he, you're right. He's a liberal. Just say yeah. you're, just say you're, um, left of center liberal. Just say what it is. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's bad faith to not at least update his position, especially because I don't know. I mean, I, I, I actually find there's specific news items where, um, oh, well, let, let's see if I can think of the most recent one. Um, I think it was like producer Pat was filling in whatever they covered some news story, but the way they covered it sounded bad faith. It just, it hit me bad faith. It was like, it might've even been about Trump. Like it, it might've been about someone deplorable where you would assume the worst, but the way the message was delivered, I got it. My spidey senses went up and I was like, I don't know if they're, I don't know if that's true. And then I looked into it and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, they weren't delivering the news it was like a hit piece. Do you feel like was it in the was it, it a hit piece in the direction of a little bit of that pro like conservative grift or like a pro lefty? Grift? <sighs> no, it was. Oh man, I just because we're talking about it in the moment, I I didn't come prepared with what clip it was. Sure, sure. But um, send some stuff my way if you find it though, because I was yeah. curious to kind of go over that like a compilation of of that phenomenon. You know. Yeah, definitely. I'll send it your way. Um, I just, it, it was, it was, a. Uh, I could probably find it pretty quickly cause it came out in the last week or so week or two, but, um, yeah, it, I just, I really value even f especially from independent journalists or independent, um, uh, news personalities. Is that what we call David Pakman? He's not necessarily a journalist, but he delivers the news. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I expect a level. Here's actually here's an example I can come up with right now from a few months ago. Um, he had a story about if you're gay in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, you'll get a fine if you're caught holding hands. Mm -hmm. That was the story. I asked my friend who's from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I've I've even like I I played a house party there in 2010 that he hosted. So I've been there like. 
not to say I'm an expert or anything at all, but um, I when I asked him about it, he's like, no, that's a total exaggeration. And then, you know, he went into it. He gave sure. me the, he gave me the nitty gritty that was like way more nuanced than just gay people can't hold hands. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think whenever people report on laws and stuff like that, they, they do tend to take the most extreme interpretation that they can for the sake of clickability. Exactly. I, I exactly. also think with the, with these people, they, they put out so much content. I believe that Pacman does daily content, right? Oh, he puts it, out tons of content. So if you have teams of, of people that I assume do that research for you as a creator like Pacman, I doubt he's doing all this himself. There's going to be stuff that slips through the cracks. There's going to be headlines that you don't dive into fully. So it is hard to say whether that's intentional, bad behavior, just him seeing an article and being like, this sounds like a good thing to report on this. You know, yeah. this fits my worldview of like why um, the right is is bad. And so whenever we meet, we encounter information like that that is attitude congruent we are far less motivated to fact check it and seek out ways that it could be wrong whereas if you see something that is attitude incongruent like like a bad thing about the left for example yeah you're way more motivated to say well let's really deep dive the nuance of this and that's just like a, a, a human bias thing that we all do sometimes you know that's absolutely true um and and just to go full circle with this i think someone like Glenn Greenwald is he's thinking emotionally about the J six stuff because of his own emotional experience with mainstream quote unquote libtards, mm -hmm. you know, or like, um, shit libs is another term they like to use. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, I think they just get lost in the sauce. I think, and especially with Jimmy Dore, he, he has so many personal vendettas. He's such an angry drunk man. Like, Dude, that guy, I think he's, I think he quit weed recently. Dude, if I had any advice for him, it would be this. Get back on the weed, quit the booze and take mushrooms, microdose mushrooms every day. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would help him find a soul a little bit. I'm sure. Yeah. Like, do you, do you believe Jimmy Dore is actually that extreme on his anti-vax viewpoints? Or is it complete audience capture and it's just performative? I don't fucking know. I mean, I you know, if, if I watch more of the guy, I might be able to tell. But if from where I'm standing, it totally could be either. I I think that these people also, once they commit to a position publicly, it's yeah. really embarrassing to walk it back. Like once mm. you're kind of dug in and you've had a public debate or two about oh, that's something, a good point. you're not going to walk back a position publicly. Um, which is why I always try to like, whenever I talk about issues, I say that I, I, I hold my opinions very tentatively, yeah. um, proportional to my ability to actually back them up because I never want to be like super strong on something. And then I'm completely wrong like a week later. And whenever you have millions of people watching you, I just think that I think that the human mind can't take the pressure of being like, you know what, I'm going to be less extreme. So I think it, it might start off as a grift. But you start to make yourself believe it the deeper into it you go. And there's a right. Oh man, that's that is a beautiful analysis. Um, I think Destiny has a superpower that allows him to be able to handle it because he he has been able to like, oh, you know what this this person sent me this really, uh, you know, insightful and informative thing about Gaza, and I changed my position slightly on that. He's able to. Mm -hmm. I like, I like, I respect that he has a superpower to be like, okay, I, I did dig my feet into this, but meh, I'll change my position and I'll deal with the consequences psychically right. without it being right. a big deal. Um, which is maybe why he has a hard time maintaining a relationship. you know, he, and he talks about that openly, like his superpower is his, and I think that's often true about all of us. Actually, I think that's universally true. Usually our superpowers are also can be our weakness or can be daggers to other people. You know what I mean? Like they could either be swords to protect. I'm just coming up with this now because I'm stoned or whatever, but they could be swords to protect or to like hurt those who have personality makeups that don't tolerate your, your personality. Well, yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's why I like destiny so much because he is probably my favorite sort of lefty content creator at the moment because he does really seem to have that ability and i don't see in other people 
as much. I mean, I, I, I have other favorites, you know, I enjoy some Sam Cedar. I like some Kyle Polinsky. Yeah. Um, I re- I really like Kyle. Mm-hmm. Kyle's yeah, he, he, dude, I would hang out with Kyle so hard. Oh like, yeah. Seems like he'd be so much fun to just chill with. Uh, yeah. I love Kyle. Uh, he's been my steady Eddie, probably my, for like the last 10 to 12 years. Uh, he's like probably my favorite content creator on the left. Um, yeah. However, however, I do have one criticism and I thank his wife, Crystal, for helping out change the set design. Like he's not using his uh, his hideous green studio as much. Yes, that's right. Thank God, because it sucks. Um, every other setting he's using now is way better. And I think he's still holding on to that green studio for whatever godforsaken reason. But um, also like his logo, it's just, it's too masculine. It's too, he he's not artsy at all, right? Like he needs, he needs either some feminine energy to, in you know what I mean? In his like graphic design or like, sure. he needs someone artsier or more feminine than him to like, hey, that's, that's kind of like, that looks like an ugly tribal tattoo from the early 2000s. Like, come on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like his set should match his vibe. And yeah, sort of like slim, shady earring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, for sure. exactly, exactly. Um, for sure. That's that's my one criticism of Kyle, and that's just on like aesthetics, um, on actual like uh, content, and uh, you know, the meat, the meat and potatoes of what he has to say. I, I'm, I would say I eighty percent agree with what he has to say. I'm not an atheist, so I think that's probably our biggest difference. Um, okay. And also my biggest difference with with Destiny, Destiny's thinking and mine. I'm like way more woo and and spiritual and like crunchy than those. Okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like you yeah, know, I, sure. I'm just I'm just way more in touch with my feelings, maybe even. Or like, be, I'm I'm also an artist. Like, I'm a musician. I make music. I'm a music producer. Okay. So that's oh, cool. that's where my head's at most of the time. I'm you know, and I mean even even Destiny as a musician, like he's obviously good at piano, but like I can tell he doesn't have taste. He needs someone to tell him, oh, like try this patch, D- turn this knob. You know what I mean? Sure. Just from like a music yeah. music producer, and I know you're a music producer. Maybe. Maybe that's where you come in into his life or like that, that piano part's awesome, but like we need, like this has to sound way different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I would love to be the one Dalaban member to have that impact on destiny. Um, I don't know. Does he put out music? Does he work on projects? I've never taught him. Putting out like anything. I don't think so. He, and he, I, and honestly, I think this is another situation where he would openly admit this. He doesn't have a palate for like even food. Like he doesn't, he's like kind of like a Philistine normie in that sense. He doesn't care about, which is also a superpower because it makes him focus on like getting things factually correct when he enters a debate. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like, be, mm-hmm. and that's, that's, that's kind of how I, I see that's, that's my prism. That's how I see things. There is like this analogy that is entering my mind to describe this. And it's like destiny is vanilla white bread. This true new, like right. neutrality when yeah. it comes to thinking, when it comes to art, when it comes yeah. to food, that, that does like allow him to kind of sit and like look at things. But then that makes his taste in food. Shitty. Dude, that's like so his, true. His, 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 his tweets about food were funny and all that Twitter drama from like last month or whatever that was. Yeah. I mean, um, Oh my God, that's so true. He's such a Nebraska Steve in that sense. Uh, that stream he did with ABBA and it's like a couple of years ago where they were all, they were all like slapping each other. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was, I actually haven't seen that. I don't think. So, um, oh my God, I, it, Brittany, that's her name. Do you remember? So he has this beef with his YouTuber, Brittany. I do remember Brittany Venti, right? That one. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so apparently they were all slapping each other on stream and she wanted to slap destiny. And because destiny's a pushover, he was like, yeah, yeah, go for it. But in retrospect, he's like, eh, I didn't really want to do it. So I should have said something. So he was using that, that stream as an example of him being a pushover. Um, but that's not even the point. That's a side point. The main point is that, that after the slap fest, 
they they talked about f- like where they were going to go eat for an hour and it was really insightful uh oh dan was also there they were talking about like what restaurant they were going to go to and you just got the sense that like steven doesn't he does he's not a food guy he doesn't know food he's not a foodie you know what i mean right so that does not surprise me in the slightest yeah so i don't know maybe maybe you can bring that that kind of riz to him the 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 he needs sauce you know he needs someone that's saucy to bring some sauce because like like you said he is the bread he's that loaf yeah. of bread he's like a solid brick of bread but it has no sauce on it it needs sauce it's not yet sliced it's just it's, it's just, just a, a lo- it's a raw loaf of bread yeah but it's a delicious raw loaf of bread and yes, yes. and it's like what do you okay so last last question before and i i know you have to go soon um do you have any thoughts on like the whole he might have put a baby into Lauren Southern or like they were having an affair? Did you see the the conclusion of that arc? I'm not sure. I've I don't feel concluded in my heart. It, you know, that loop is still open in my brain, so I I'm hoping you can close that loop for me. My my understanding was that all of that was it was it was um fabricated by Lauren Southern and not so not so erudite and they pass that information to Rolo and they try to leak that to Rolo to pretend like it was like Lauren's ex-husband or something but it was them just to make Rolo fall for it and claim that he had all this dirt on destiny and then they came out and tweeted that they forged the documents and it was all fake and they just it was just a big troll for Rolo Tomasi Uh so did Lauren and destiny they were banging though right isn't that true um, I don't, I don't know that part. I have no idea. But as far as like all the pregnancy stuff goes, that was just them trying to fuck with with uh, Tomasi. But they might have actually been. I just, I generally assume that Destiny bangs most women that she yeah. ever has on stream. Um, but I don't right, know. yeah, I, don't know. I, I definitely got fuck vibes from them, especially when they were together. Uh, when they did that thing where they switched roles, and Lauren was a Democrat voter and Destiny was Republican or whatever. I remember that. Uh, awesome. and they were, they were definitely fucking on that. Like, come on, come on. Who are we kidding here? Right. Um, that's the vibe I got. But then, um, I don't think he's fucked. Not so erudite though, I, because she's married. Isn't she monogamous? Yeah, I think, um, I thought I read somewhere that she wasn't, but yeah, I, I have no idea on, on that front. They just seem like very good friends to me, but yeah, you know, time, Destiny is, time a, will tell. is, is, a, is a silver tongue devil. I don't know. <laughs> But, yeah, he is a silver tongue devil. It's hilarious. Um, yeah. And you know, I think it'll be very cool to go meet him in person. I mean, because I, I I have never been a content <laughs> creator. Like I was at, I was at fifty subs like four months ago. So I was I'm brand new to this whole space and like going on podcasts and stuff. And so and um, it was it was surreal to like talk to him after watching him for about five years now. But I I hope it'll be cool and I'll be able to kind of make some content there and. Uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of curious to see where this whole YouTube journey goes. It's, it's very interesting so far. Yeah, I mean, I I will be following your entire YouTube journey probably forever at this point. Like, usually when I really like people, when I really like people's content, I'm on the ride forever. Unless unless you fuck it up somehow, right? Do you know what I mean? Right, right. But like, sure. I'm I am a fan now, probably forever. Um, there is this other YouTuber, I re- small like much smaller YouTuber. He, he it's, it seems impossible for him to grow because he's such a a contrarian. But he's like far left. He, I think he considers himself a communist. Do you know the YouTuber Mark of the Beast? I feel like I've heard that name. I thought for a while he was like a really unique voice on the left, on the like online left within you know, uh, in terms of internet and and like political commentary but uh, i don't know i kind of lost i lost touch with him he becomes too obsessive maybe that's what it is that when people start to become like overly obsessive like it becomes like a sickness maybe that's what i'm like uh eh, maybe i shouldn't take part in this anymore Do you know what I mean? like sure consuming this person's content um i don't know just thinking yeah my 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 whole thing is like i started off um trying to make like a serious politics youtube channel so if you go into like my my early catalog it's all just like me like talking to a camera very serious like essay style stuff 
And as I went on, I just realized that I, I think that market is so oversaturated at this point. And I have followed politics for a long time, but honestly, I'm more of just, I enjoy making memes more because there is a, there's a niche for it. There's a void that I think needs to be filled. Agreed. Agreed. Content creator memes, you know, be that through rap battles or sketch comedy. And I so agree. That, so that's kind of more the direction I'm going to go. If I ever do make serious content again, I will incorporate sketch comedy into it. And there are some ideas I have of how to do that. But uh, I really just want to be like a like a high effort shit poster. I think kind of going to be my my niche. But we'll see one day that my my branch in the. I think what I do is medium effort shit posting because, you know, like I'm scene switching and it looks professional and it goes up on Spotify and it looks nice and then it gets edited down to clips and those are even more nuanced. I don't know if that's high effort. That's not as high effort as what you're doing. I think what you're doing is high effort. I'm okay chilling in the in the medium lane, I guess, with internet content. With music yeah. though, but that but I'm I think I'm okay with that because with music is where I'm like, no, I want to be like a fucking highfalutin snob. Like I'm a snob, right? right. I have taste, you baby. Me, <laughs> you strike me as a fan of Radiohead. Is this accurate? Yeah, I mean, I really like that new Smile record. I think it's a really good. Okay, yeah, same. Yeah, yeah it's it's, it's really good. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, as far as like me, uh, music stuff goes, like send me your content. I would love to if we ever like work on a beat or something. That'd yeah, I'd love to do that. I'm super down. Um, yeah, and just and last thing I'll say about uh, your content. Um, the thing I really like about it is that, like, if you followed the lore, if you followed Destiny or Vosh or any of these even jordan peterson if you know enough then you get the jokes right it, it's right. it's gratifying it's like ah oh, i invested hours of my life fucking smoking weed and watching you know destiny or whoever and i thought it was for for not like i i was voluntarily throwing my time down a well cuz i just cuz i enjoy it right like that's that's how i that's my my um my way of of chilling out, right? That's that's how I like to do downtime is like watching Destiny debate people while I smoke weed or whatever. Right. So I just assumed like that's that's it, you know? I don't expect anything back, but when someone like you comes along and makes content like this, it reinforces like ah. Yes, I get these jokes. <laughs> and like and what's cool is that it, not everyone can get the joke, right? That's what makes it, it's like, ooh, you know, only like 12,000 of us get this or or, right. or however many people, it, I hope it's more people than that. But yeah, that that's what I like about it. That's what that's why it delivers. You know, that's why I think I'm going to stick around for the the whole ride. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's, I, I, I feel the same way about creating it. Like I've sunk so many, like, like countless hours of my life and then just watching like the brain rot of internet politics. So exactly. I finally do something with it and then combine that with my love of like music production too. So I don't know. I think it's a, it is certainly niche, but it's a niche that I think there's room to grow and kind of reach a decently sized audience in there. But um, I, don't yeah. know. I love the lore. I love the references. And they're, they're, they're people that I both know very well, um, you know, parasocially, of course. Yeah. And so I don't know. It's cool, and I want to branch out and make more comedy sketches and stuff too. Oh yeah, uh, that is something. Have, yeah, that's something I want yeah. to do too. Like uh, my co-host and I, we talk about that all the time. About like eventually we want to branch out and do more sketches, but it's so high mm -hmm. effort. Um, I really it is. Let me just run, let me run this this idea by you quickly. Um, I'm a big Kids in the Hall fan, and I really want to write a Kids in the Hall sketch with um with you know uh open AI or whatever. Okay. You know, and just like type out the scripts for each character, or it could be like a meeting where they're like discussing what the next season of the show is going to be. Um, which is, that seems medium effort. It doesn't seem like it's going to require more than a few hours or whatever. Um, but yeah, sketch comedy, fuck that could take a lot of editing and concept. That's I I would put that in high effort, right? For sure, yeah. The one that I'm currently working on, it's it's been in in production for like about three weeks now. But also, like I'm like very busy with like work and like other things, so I haven't yeah. been able to put as much time in as I want to. But it's it's a uh, it is a Dave Rubin related video, and it is entirely sketch comedy. 
and may or may not feature a little bit of Sam Seer. So oh I hope my God. that you will enjoy that. I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm excited. I'm, I'm trying to have it out by next weekend. So maybe like next Friday. Uh, here's hoping though. It all depends on if I can, um, if I can get in touch with a, if I call it a Sam Cedar show. So right. We'll see. right, right, right. Well, I will yeah. say that, well, I'll say two things. There is no such thing as too much Dave Rubin dunking content. No such thing. That is, that's the one exception where like, if you become obsessed with him and making, I'm so down, I'll watch all of it. Any, any YouTube video that pops up that dunks on Dave Rubin, I can't help but click it. It no, that's that's my Achilles heel, right? Hell yeah, same. I mean, I, I can't it's fucking. Fruit, it's low hanging but... fruit. I can't help it. Um, but yeah, I think you found your niche. I think you're killing it. You're on the right path. Uh, I'm in the. I'm cheerleading for you. I'm going. Yeah, yeah, more. We love it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Big fan. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it, Samuel. It was great yeah. to meet you. Thanks for having me on. And yeah, let's chat again soon and like uh, send me some music stuff. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. I'll uh I'll send you some links in Instagram. Okay. That yeah. sounds good. Thanks again. All right. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Peace. All right. Great guy. Love his content. Um, let's just I'm just gonna play uh I'm going to play Ben Shapiro versus Destiny Rap Battle first. Hold on, hold on. Let's see here. Let's make this big. There we go. Let's close out the show. With some, some of Rowan's content. Mommy, I crushed him with facts and logic. That's so great, honey. I only wish I had a chance to do it all over again. Well, maybe you will in your dreams tonight. Good night, my little Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Good night, mommy. In my dreams. Uh... And then I said, lobster, I hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, chat, I swear to God, don't make me bring back the extremes. Oh, shit. Hello, Steven. Are you ready for our debate round two, rap battle edition? You know I always stay strapped, Ben. Excellent. I'll start. Yo, let's say, hypothetically, purely theoretically, though we lived in a world where you could spit bars better than me and make more chatter than me and fuck whap wetter than me. Oh, wait, you have a girl's name. Ha, get fucked, Destiny. And maybe you would have a sliver of hope. But nope, you don't. I predict I'll love your liberal trope. Your take on abortion is unfortunate. I'm tracking down your coordinates like Israel. I'll make sure my response is proportionate. Got God on my side when I'm sitting in synagogue. Goggins, David, ain't got shit on me. I'm a demigod. Insane rhymes, precision like a verbal surgeon. True to my religion. Till I was married, I was a virgin. To be expected, the art of debate I have perfected. Your logic is sus. Sorry, Stephen, you've been ejected. Infringe the Second Amendment veto, I redirect it. Maybe the nerd of the right, the bitch you will respect it. And now, a word from our sponsor. ExpressVPN guarantees your privacy with now. Holy shit, you're insufferable. Uh, how did you interrupt my ad read in my dream? I don't know, Ben. I guess you just fucking suck. Let me show you how a real MC spits. Here comes little Ben Shapiro, the conservative fool, compensating for all the years that he was bullied in school. Always ducking on college students, picking low-hanging fruit. Will I crush real leftists and do your own job better than you? Your epistemic and meta-ethical framework is shit. It's called presuppositionalism. Go fuck yourself, bitch. You're all Mr. Facts and Logic, while your whole worldview is based on fairy tale bullshit that you can't even prove every conservative i debate leaves the venue in tears i've been wrecking people with double your coherence for years ask alex jones when i spanked him made his ego deflate i'm beginning to feel like i'm the fucking god of debate destroy my foes with deadly precision no pivoting necessary i left the debate stage taking this to a cemetery verdict's the death penalty i'm the judiciary fuck a manifesto i just wrote your obituary not bad steven i didn't want to have to do this but you've left me no choice it's time for me to channel ancient Hebrew straight from the Kabbalah. But Ben, you could literally die. It's worth it if it means defeating the likes of you. This is the end for you, Stephen. Fuck him up, bucko! Let's speed it up. Tiny Jewish cat. Four skin missing. My name is Ben Shapiro, and wrecking leftists what I do for a living. Think you can verbally decimate me? Your imagination must be wild. 
crusty and alley view buried in rubble like a Palestinian child. Damn. My media courage prolific. Conservative stereotypic. Don't want to well first or support government programs that are parasitic. Nope. My logic is so analytic. Facts. My pH is highly Hasidic. Ha. Criticize Israel, I'll get your ass canceled for being anti-Semitic. His friend Ammon is now leaving the station, carrying the torture tradition in another generation, saving all of the Jodid sexual orientations and fueling the Lacia Malo or taxation breeds on inflation. You want to decimate the tax, the Judeo-Christian values that all underlie the West, but my flow is ineffable and impeccably blast. And do you really want to know what's next? Let's go! Call me Gordon Ramsay because I'm Dyson with a steak knife. Your nihilism and denial of the next life be a death blow when you see on the fish eye me a sneak go running trains on your ex-wife. I'm just kidding, at least it for the bit. As a Jew, adultery is on a thing I would commit. Being rap god is fun, but my time is on loan. There's only one god and now I give him back a throne. I'm done. Not bad, Ben, but you forgot one thing. What's that? My Adderall just kicked in. <laughs> Ripperino, cappuccino, papuccino, hoppuccino, mappuccino, cappuccino, cappuccino. Filipino, maraschino, jalapeno, wallabino, whiny bino, rip it to me like a nino. Very shitty, feeling creepy, do me, I feel like I want to kill myself alive with some of fire. We just sick, I didn't eat the day, I suffer poisoning, I just get the witch of the daily wire. Every time I get a prep, read the beta, reference Wikipedia, I load the demo, bring a lock, then and then I show up at the way and make it wish to stand. Then I ask to pray and I plan, I'm too busy going super saiyan. World AG realist, so I don't believe in moral facts. Economic leftist, so I do believe in higher taxation on the rich proportional to their ability to maximize efficiency and marginal utility. I don't believe the circumstantial economic factors should determine a child's future and know how they climb the ladder just because they're born to parents who cannot afford to send their kids to Harvard, we can't all be born to Hollywood executives. Your market fundamentalism is a natural extension of your bad knack to lack wisdom, but it tracks for a right-wing hack whose rhymes whack as facts to stab back, attack, get him. Or at it, didn't you oppose the Civil Rights Act because it violated private business freedoms? But you back a Santa who sued Disney for their free speech, but hey, principles, who needs them? Started from the bottom, now I'm dumb rich. Sub 80 IQ, you a dumb bitch. This is it, Ben, hear the tolling of the bells. Final words ringing in your ears, gotcha. Anything else? Gotcha. Anything else? Gotcha. And you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Hey! Oh, oh shit. Oops. Okay, here. Yo, 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 yo. Sit down, son, and let me tell you a tale about how to rescue your father from the belly of the whale. I travel the world, filling stadiums wherever I go. Meanwhile, your white's getting fucked while you're playing Factorio. My sexual blue hair leftist, yep, you check all the boxes for BPD, autism, and being obnoxious. Think because you talk fast and pull optical tricks, you're saying anything of substance will suck my dick. Forty years I studied philosophy and discovered the fact that my highest moral imperative is kicking your ass. From postmodern neo Marxists like you, you left your webcam on, Steven. How about you clean your room? When I'm finished with you, I will have converted your fans. They'll be so moved by my arguments that they'll stop being trans. I offer young men hope, meaning, knowledge, and facts. Your fans watch you defend incest. Yeah, good luck with that. Sorry, Steven. You know I had to do it to ya. Steven? Oh, oh God. I'm a little disappointed, I thought we were here the debate But the metaphysics of the back of my hand meeting your face Not listen to dog shit ad homs while you try not to cry But if you wanna make this blood sports, you pick the wrong guy Every time I see you, you're fucking crying and bitching and seething And sucking the cock of a religion you don't even believe in And losing your license, soon they're gonna rescind your diploma When I'm finished with you, you'll wish that you were back in a coma You were semi-coherent as a professor back in the day Before you're obsessed with dick surgery, rotted your brain The Benzos fuck your mind, Gordon you can't get back on top of this Leave you suck and dig for Percocets like Milo Yiannopoulos It was Hassan, Fox, Bob, Seven, Max, and yourself When the manifesto traps will be another notch in the belt And when it's all over, Jordan, you ain't getting to heaven Cause you just got your ass wrecked by a dude who's 5'7 Okay, well, it was nice knowing you, my dude Arino. I'm gonna go play League now Not so fast, Steven I have one more verse Man, that just feels wrong Must be hard living in that 6-3 shower with the song I'd stick around longer, Steven But I have lessons to teach Mama Lena gets strange Man, I'll hurt my Abba and preach You fucking Starcraft nerd You think you're smarter than me? I taught at Harvard, bitch I have a PhD You wanna cancel me? Watch me for 40 and slip? How about you keep your girl off of this Canadian dick? I bang all the fans models every night of the week Your fans only give them money for a peek at their feet I wreck conservatives by day, wreck pussy by night And at least people actually wanna fuck my wife I built leftist YouTube in the conservative age While you progressed to Piaget's pre-operational stage You used to be a professor, but you just got out class So take your metaphysical substrate and shove it right up your ass 
that's D to the double G, bitch. bitch, bitch, bitch.